Thank you, Honorable Speaker, sir. Mr. Speaker, Honorable Prime Minister, Honorable Leader of Opposition, and Honorable Members of Parliament, I wanted to address this August House and contribute to 2020-2021 National Budget Debate. Mr. Speaker said the Ministry of Rural and Maritime Development and Disaster Management has been allocated with $16.6 .6 million for the new financial year. This is in the Rural Development Program as well as the National Disaster Management Operations. Mr. Speaker said we have observed in the past nine months since the commencement of the cyclone period in November 2019 how the National Disaster Management Office and the Divisional Commissioner's Office have worked tirelessly through the various disasters that, have, that our beloved country has encountered. The COVID-19 pandemic was obviously the test of our resilience in responding to the different forms of disasters. We acknowledge the great effort put in the, by the Ministry of Health and Medical Services and our security forces in working with the Ministry's team on the ground in, in identification of preparedness of the isolation facilities for quarantine purposes. The assistance in the mobilization of resources for the contact tracing and policing of the community ensured that the disaster was contained within the localities of those who were affected. Mr. Speaker said, I do not need to elaborate about Fiji is very vulnerable to the natural disasters, but allow me to enlighten this house with the cost of damage caused by the several tropical cyclones in the past 10 years. In 2010, tropical cyclone Thomas total damage and losses was valued at approximately $84.3 million, representing 1.4% of the GDP with one casualty. In 2012, TC Evan total damage and losses was valued at approximately $194.9 million, representing 2.74% of GDP. And in 2016, Tropical Cyclone Winston total damage and losses was valued at approximately $194.9 million, representing 19.35% of GDP with 44 casualties. In 2018, TCE Gita total damage and losses was valued at approximately $1.2 million, representing 0.012% of GDP with no casualties, followed by TC Kinney with total damage and loss valued at approximately $1.2 million, representing 0.028% of GDP with two casualties. And in 2019, the uh, TC Sarai total damage and losses was valued at approximately $10.3 million, representing 0.09% of GDP with two casualties. And in 2020, TC Tino total damage and losses was valued at approximately $3.2 million, representing 0.03% of GDP with two casualties, and TC Herald recording approximately $100 million in damage and losses, representing 0.9% of GDP with one casualty. In, sum in summary, Mr. Speaker said the total damage and losses recorded in Fiji in the past 10 years were valued at $2.42 billion. Mr. Speaker said, having said this, I must highlight at the outset, the focus of ministry is to coordinate government effort in building a silent and sustainable committee. Mr. Speaker said, my ministry acknowledges that $0.8 million has been allocated to, to Prime Minister's Relief and Repetition Fund to ensure that disaster relief and response activities are, are provided to affected communities during disasters. This funding mechanism has been very effective in past disasters as it provides funding for immediate response during the onset of any disaster. We are not disheartened with this amount. It may seem relatively small comparing to the damage caused of the disasters. It, as it goes without saying that reprioritization is part of the process when disasters do happen. We are also comforted by the fact that the, our friends and partners in disasters management have proven their support to the ministry as as they are always ready to open the heart during the period of disaster. Nevertheless, Mr. Speaker said, the ministry will continue with its awareness program for disaster preparedness and risk reduction. Mr. Speaker said, the National Disaster Management Act 1998 is still being used as guide for the ministry in order to, in ministry in disaster management operations and to ensure government aligned to its global commitment, especially the Paris, Paris Agreement on climate change 2015, sustainable development agenda 
2015 to 2030, and the Sendai Framework for Disaster Risk Reduction 2015 to 2030. Mr. Speaker said, in order to align with the Sendai Framework for Disaster Risk Reduction, the Ministry is now implementing the National Disaster Risk Reduction Policy, NDRRP. This implementation en en entails Fiji's achievement on Target E of the Sendai Framework, which focuses on the national and local strategies by 2030. The NDMO has been allocated 30,000 to continue consultation with stakeholders and the implementation of streamlining of 122 excellent activities that dovetails the new era of NDMO's op op operations. These actions, action activities will display ahead government's, government ministry's response to DRR and showcase the rest of the world that Fiji is taking proactive approach towards disaster management. Mr. Speaker said last year, the Honorable Prime Minister launched the NDRRP, which was followed by two national consultations conducted by NDMO. With support from the Department of Foreign, Foreign Affairs and Trade Australia through the Fiji Program Support Facility, the NDMO has also comp uh, completed the Central and Western Division sub-national workshops, while the Northern and Eastern Divisions are planned for September this year. The Ministry will ensure that not only, our, not, that not only are our decisions and risks informed, but also engage with our communities about the different roles they play at the outlined in the N NDRRP. Mr. Speaker said the NDMO, in collaboration with Japanese government, Japan International Cooperation Agencies, JICA, is piloting a disaster reduction municipal plan in Nedi Town and is also providing technical assistance in the form of a DRR advisor. This project was embarked to begin early this year. However, it has been delayed due to COVID-19. The Sendai framework has disaster risk reduction 2015-2030 is designed to support the reduction of existing level of risk and, and prevent from risk from emerging. The National Disaster Management has been allocated 20,000 to develop the National Disaster Database, which will enable the collision of hazard data and past data, past disaster data for the formulation of risk and hazard impact modeling. The database will allow the National Disaster Management Office to develop risk assessment methodologies and the storage of data, storage of damage assessment data from past and future data, disasters. Mr. Speaker say, we support the initiative of working smart launched by the Honorable Minister for Economy. And the database will, be, will ensure that we invest ourselves with a more modern means of analyzing crisis and implementing evidence-based science-driven decision-making tools. Mr. Speaker said, while we are funding the training of and awareness activities, we would like to acknowledge that our international donor partners, namely the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade Australia, Japan International Cooperation Agencies, JICA, USAID, and the Inter International Federation of Red Cross, have, have come, with, come in not only assist, to assist implementation of NDRRP, but also help the development of committees based disaster risk reduction policies. Community-based disaster preparedness activities will play a critical role in developing communities, adaptive capacity, and resilience to, to disasters. The community-based disaster risk reduction training manuals is currently being, being piloted, piloted in selected venues communities in Eastern and Central Division. And it has been developed in partnership with the partners in community development Fiji. To date, Mr. Speaker said, we have conducted community disaster risk reduction management training in 350 communities in this year. And we are, we are supposed we are supported by our partners, Live and Learn, and we will contact nine work in emergency operation centers, training for our civil servants in nine districts across Fiji. These nine districts are Nandronga, Tobuni, Sabu Sabu, Senganga, Lambasa, Rutuma, Sengani, and Tukavesi. The NDMO has been allocated $8,000 for such training, as mandated in the National Disaster Management Act 1998. The aftermath of disasters. 
The development of this manual will highlight as the recommendation on a lesson learned from T.C. Winston. Mr. Speaker said 15,000 has been allocated towards the awareness program. The NDMO plan to hold the National Disaster Awareness Week in Yasawa this year. Given that the Yasawa group of islands is prone to the impact of tropical cyclone, storm surge, and climate change, this exposure will surely empower the community to become more resilient. Mr. Speaker said, government has continued funding for the maintenance of flood early owning systems, which is essential for communities living in flood prone areas of Nedi, Lotoka, Tabwa, Ba, and Singitoka. A total of $10,000 has been allocated for this purpose. Mr. Speaker said, in addition, $10,000 is provided for, to assist the NDMO in carrying out disaster management services. The lesson learned from TC Winston was a formul formulation of the Fiji cluster group system, which adopted from the UN cluster system framework in localizing it into the Fiji context. The Fiji cluster system is the government-led humanitarian coordination mechanism. It, co it operates at the national strategy level throughout the disaster risk management cycle. It is also a link to the sub-national level humanitarian coordination mechanism led by divisional commissioners. Each sectional cluster is led by a secretary of an appropriate ministry who will be supported by the cluster secretariat to coordinate humanitarian actors within the sector. Mr. Speaker say, it is widely known that the context of the disaster is evolving. As such, the upscaling of our DSLOs is also vital. With the support from the Australian government through the Register of Engineers for Disaster Relief, a series of training will be, will be done on humanitarian, humanitarian work and cluster support. Mr. Speaker said the total of $80,000 has been allocated for the development of robust emergency communication system. The NDMO is penetrating or partnering with JICA in the, uh, in the setup of the resilient and multi-hazard early warning system. This will include the establishment of new tsunami sirens in populated coastal, amongst coastal areas amongst the Lemi Lotoka Corridor and selected maritime islands in the Western Division. Further to this, we are also working with Ministry of Communication to the Fiji cluster system to identify black spot areas within the country where further support will be provided to ensure communications is not affected during disasters. Mr. Speaker said additional support for JICA from JICA includes the installation of nine HF, radio, HF radios in this year in the black spot area in Vanulebu and we are envisioned to cover the remaining spot in Fiji in the near future. The total of $30,000 has been allocated for the, maritime, for the maritime and maintenance of emergency equipment. Mr. Speaker said the New Zealand Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Trade has been a vital active partner in providing funding support to the number of NDMOs in Steve. What Worth mentioning is the support rendered through the procurement of tsunami siren within the Suva Peninsula and technical advisors that currently sits within NDMO. Mr. Speaker say the NDMO is looking at completing the review of the National Disaster Management Act of 1998 towards the end of this year, and also the formulation of disaster regulations and the plan of operationalize the Disaster Act. Other initiatives includes the formulation of disaster risk assessment guideline to be used by our development partners and the, and the continued upgrading of disaster communication network and tsunami early warning system. Mr. Speaker said, government continues to strongly educate this community's resilience, which will contribute towards sustainable livelihood and in this pressing time of COVID-19. We become robust advocates of leaving no one behind. With this, Mr. Speaker say, a comment the Honourable Minister for Economy and his team for the bold and resilient debate. Budget, sorry, I commend the Minister of Economy and his team for the bold and resilient budget, which I wholeheartedly support. Thank you, sir.